Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, once more to a round three coverage of the modern regional protocol of from Dark Star in London. John Partridge, Holland, and we have a doozy of a feature match area this time. It's going to be a quick, fast and furious oh, it action. Is. It's basically two zoo decks. However, <laughs> two very significant differences. Definitely. On one side of the bracket, we have Lewis Marshbank. He's on Naya Zoo. So that's Wild Nakatl, Monastery Swift Spear, the burn deck we were talking about yeah. earlier. On the other side, however, <laughs> Shay, would you like to please explain what so on <laughs> earth the opposing is playing so, in this tournament? So I'm going to name one card in this deck. Okay, go for it. Death's Shadow. I have no idea what that card does, so you're okay. going to have to talk this one through to me. It's it's a 13-13 okay. for black mana. Right. Just black. As in, the symbol black. It costs one black mana for a 13-13. Now, I bet you're asking yourself, what? <laughs> How does that work? So it turns out that <laughs> when you play a 13-13 for black mana, it has to have a drawback. And okay. in this case, the drawback is... It has minus X, minus X, where X is your life total. Right, so it comes in as a minus 7, minus 7 if you were to play it on turn 1. Assuming you played it off a swamp okay. and no, you'd not been dealt any damage. Obviously, right now, it would be coming in as a minus 15, minus 15. Uh, sorry, a minus 5, minus 5. And obviously, <laughs> an interesting thing. It's called Suicide Zoo. The idea for James is to get his life total to a reasonably low amount in a quite a quick manner. Ideally, so that he can make this Death Shadow as a pretty huge creature. And right now, he's looking at a... Unfortunately for him, his opponent's on burn, so he is obviously happy for James to go to a low life total, because it makes his life a hell of a lot easier. When you're going turn one, take five... So essentially, this is going to be a lava axe on turn one because, well, maybe, maybe because we'll he see. might want to get a fet, uh, a dual land. Yeah, and this is obviously one Shotgun. of the really interesting facts about this suicide zoo deck is it wants to go low, Not but, too so low. Do, but so does Lewis. He wants to get him low, but then he's playing massive, massive creatures. Yeah, and obviously we will just quickly so pull up the, the interesting part of uh, idea of the suicide do zoo deck is. It runs pump spells and stuff, and it goes for the team or battle rage combo. Oh, to become immense team or yeah. battle. Ooh, that's uh, nice. I'm I like sure that one a lot. Become immense, but it's just running. It oh, it is running four become, become immense, immense and four team or battle rage, four thought seas. Wow. Uh, two mutagenic growth and two vines of basswood. So obviously the mutagenic growth to pump and also take damage. The vines the to protect. Yeah. Uh, Mishra's bauble is card draw. Yeah. Um, allows it to keep going and we see so a Kurde we see a 2-3 we, we a 2-3 two two for one mana facing off against the 2 mana 1-1 one, one. the 2-2 two, the two, two for one so at the moment the Kurde doing quite a good so job so this of is um, so he gets to look <laughs> at the top card of Lewis's deck <laughs> and draw a card in here in Lewis's upkeep so, so it, it's a card that draws you a card but at the same time fuels your become events yep and um, we see Team of Battle Rage off the top for James yep. Levin so you know he's Obviously, he's not got a combo now, but he can do some damage. Well, and unfortunately, we this don't. Unfortunately for Lewis, he doesn't have any really good answers to a Curd Ape, which is very surprising for Burning. <laughs> he's got Rift Bolt, Rift Bolt, Lava Spike, Lands, and and a, and a Swift Spear, and none of those aren't none of those answer no. the um the, the Curd Ape. This is uh, this deck was originally played by Fabrizio and Terry, mm -hmm. who top eighted GP Copenhagen. Oh wow. Uh, no, sorry, not top eight. He top sixteen GP Copenhagen running Suicide Zoo. Oh um, so we see a suspended rift. And I was I was speaking to him during the tournament. I went to him, "How's your burn matchup?" And he was like, yeah, "It's probably about fifty fifty ish, yeah. maybe." You, you can see why it's not terrible, because you're playing the team of Battle Rage become a mess combo, and, and you can kill your opponent from literally nowhere. Yeah. So we're going to see a wild Nakatl here for for James Love. Obviously, he's got double team of Battle Rage. Not on really online at the moment, but Wilding Out will be only a 2-2 two -two at the moment, but it will be a 3-3 three -three with that fetch land, and he can do the tap my stuff. So we're going to see the Rift Bolt come off suspend, where, trigger where the... Do you, where do you send it? <sighs> and we really, can see Lewis really going to the tank about it as well. Because James is you, you kind of want to get already. rid of this Nakatl now. Yeah. It is, it, it's probably going to be a bit of a problem, Yeah. but at the same time... Yeah, I know. think you go after the Nakatl here, because yeah. what you can do is you can trigger the Swift Spear, you can lava spike James, which triggers the Swift Spear, which makes it bigger than the um, the Curd Ape. The Curd Ape, and obviously, I'm fairly sure Lewis has a bit of an idea of what his opponent's doing, but might have literally no idea at the same time, and and might not attack with the Swift Spear just for the risk of the pump spell, or get blown out by one. 
obviously we, we have the benefit of knowing there is no doesn't seem to be a punch spell in James's hand but, but he's, he's, a, he's really tanking on this one it's a very difficult decision yeah, those are James, both are bigger James than his James is deciding what to do so the Rift Bolt I believe was going to the Nakatl so he is oh, oh no, so it's a mutagenic growth. Uh, sorry mutagenic growth. growth so pay two life plus two plus two instant speed normally is found in infect. the infect decks I can't Obviously, for those of you at home who aren't aware, Phyrexian Mana, which obviously is pay that colour or pay two life. Yep. Target creature gets plus two plus two till end of turn. Obviously, one of the things with the Infect X is you can tap out and go Mutagenic Growth, my guy, for the, for the additional two points yeah. of damage. It, it enables the very early kills, and in this, well, it's keeping his Wild Nakat alive. And right now, he has a zero zero Death Shadow he could play. <laughs> we're almost there. We're almost, almost at there. Death, I mean, we're almost at Death one Shadow. One point of life, and that's yeah. going to be live. Yeah, so we see three mana here. I think we could just see the second Rift Bolt. A, 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 just a cast Rift Bolt. And we're going to see Rift Bolt going after the Curd Ape this time again, triggering the Swift Spear. The Wild Macattle has three points of damage on it. Mm -hmm. So it's currently only if it gets hit by two Haggai. So Lewis, we're going to see those swing in, trigger the Swift Spear. That's now a 3 4. So this is five damage that James is going to be So he's going to trigger, he's going to reveal his own Swift Spear. <laughs> Which is a reasonable blocker depending on what Lewis has in hand. We know Lewis, is, Lewis is down to just two cards. One of them is a Sacred Foundry, the other one, Lava Spike. Neither of them deal very well with an opposing Swift Spear. No, and I think James might actually have. I think he had a Death Shadow in hand, but I might be wrong. If he does, then pff, we're looking at a pretty big man next turn. <laughs> But yeah, so <laughs> so one of the things. So we see in with the team. So James is in an interesting position. Is how does he want to go forward with his face? Who's going to crack the land? Make his Nakatl into a three-three. So we see overgrown tomb. This is one of the things. The Suicide Zoo deck doesn't just use Mutagenic Growth, it also has the Ataxian Probe, which is for Axiom Manor again. Yep. It could also just use Ravnica, Jewel, Ravnica Shock Lands and Fetch Lands to do the damage it needs for the Death Shadow, and he's down to seven. So, draw for the turn, we see oh, Become Immense. So, I don't think he's quite got kill. 20 damage, but no. <laughs> it's uh, not he, No, no, he, he might have it with the Swift Spear, but he needs another land. So we see Death He'll Shadow. Need two lands. He wants the no, yeah, he needs two well. lands. So he's he's going with the Death Shadow, which is going to be a five, a six, six, six. six. It's a six, six at the moment, which is pretty big. Yeah. But James is only at seven, and well, if Boris Charms comes off the top, that ends the game. Yep. So we see a draw for the turn. That's another land. So Lewis hits his fifth land drop, which is obviously not where he's wanting to be. So into the tank for Lewis. So Have a think about what he wants to do. I mean, a land off the top for James here, I think, might actually mean a kill. Yeah, he needs the land. He needs the he, land. He though. needs a land. So Lewis is going to play a tap land and say go. <laughs> and that's the thing, he does need the land. And a land is also more damage if it's a fetch land. Or if it's a Ravnik shot land. We see, oh, Verdant Catacombs off the top. So He has to be careful, though. He can't... He Because he knows... if Lewis had sh One of the things Lewis could have done, as very interesting to play, is shock in his Sacred Foundry. Which demonstrates Boris Charm, yep. which means that James can't just go crack fetch or mm -hmm. fetch my fetch my Ravnica dual land, because he goes to four and Boris Charm kills him. Whereas if he goes for a bait, he might be forced to go for a basic now. Which should be so. <laughs> this is be interesting. To interesting see. to see if Lewis knows how how this actually works. Um, knows this deck at all, but. If he doesn't block, he is dead. <laughs> if he blocks, he is dead. <laughs> so it will be interesting to see. But this is this is one of the interesting things about this deck is it's so explosive. You know, you're making a creature and doing a couple things. Okay, so he's going to put the Goblin Guide in front <laughs> he's, of... He's playing it safe. <laughs> yeah, And it's a very interesting play, this one. So the Death Shadow is a 6-6. Six, six. I mean, doesn't Team of Battle Rage become immense just... It, it, it's lethal. Yeah. Team of Battle Rage plus become immense right now is lethal. Um, because it's 6 plus at least 
one from the thing, so it's seven, plus the six from the battle rage. Uh, but he's so not gone for, for it. Commands. Interesting, he doesn't go for it, instead he plays another <laughs> death shadow. But the problem is he's giving Lewis more turns he to has. draw it, and oh, another land off the top for Lewis. Yeah, oh. interesting that James didn't decide to go for it there. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know if he has non-shock mm. lands that he can fetch. He should do, he has a blood crypt that we know about. There is a blood crypt. Non-shock. Oh fetches. yes, sure, it depends uh, on how uh, much space he, he might not be. Yeah, he might not want to go to but six. what can do four points of damage that wouldn't but have... He, he might have been worried about two burn spells yeah. in Lewis's hand. Yeah. Now he's just going for it. He's seen that Lewis has just played land, land and pass the turn. So he's probably reasonably happy just going for a combo here. <laughs> Sorry. Fetch land, f fetching up. Interesting. Fetching up the Temple Garden. Obviously, Obviously. more green Turns mana. on the Nukal. Yep. That's what he wants. Yeah, he wants to be able to attack with everything and just do the bits and pieces to that which he doesn't need. And I mean, these uh, are all uh, the the Death Shadows are all six, uh, are all seven, seven. seven so th th they get the double strike anyway. And I think this could be on to game number two very uh, shortly. The double, it's double strike, and if they, they have ferocious, ferocious and trample, which they will do, fortunately. Exactly. Yeah. But the, 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 he's gonna, uh, he's gonna. Uh, you can see Lewis, Lewis has resigned to his fate. He un has unfortunately. I, I, I think Lewis had about a turn where if he drew burn spells, he probably managed to win. So he's gonna team a battle rage that. Um, so he's on a seven, uh, fourteen. Four, yeah, 14 wins 12 3 10 that's 22 damage <laughs> yeah which is being soaked up by 2 and unfortunately the lava spike is a sorcery but he has to become immense just in case he needs it as well it's I mean even if it wasn't a sorcery that's still tw only 21 damage yeah <laughs> so yeah so yeah so <laughs> Lewis has seen enough on to game number 2 so the sideboards we'll start with the uh, the, the deck's probably a little bit easier we have 4 destructive revelry 3 molten rain to three Lightning Helix, three Path to Exiles, and two Searing Blaze. Now, the cards I don't mind so much in this one is possibly the Lightning Helixes and the Molten Rains. Molten Rain, he, he, we've seen there lots of different Ravnica Dual Lands. Possibly also um, some of the, the maybe the um, Grim Lava Mancers, maybe not so, so good in this matchup. They're a little bit too slow. The, all of James James's creatures are 3-3s three that he's seen, apart from the Swiss Bill. We've got 3-3 three, three Nacals, 2-3, so they're X-3s, so the three toughness. Um, the, the, the rest of the plan is obviously very strong. Uh, Lava Spike might also be a worse Lightning Helix because you can cast it at instant speed, you can cast the Helix at instant speed and gain life, which as we saw there can be quite important. And also the Lava Spike can't kill James's creatures and Lightning Helix can. So although Lightning Helix is two mana, the ability to read to actually direct it at a, a Wildner Cattle could be really important. Apart from that, the Searing Blazes uh, might be an option because the Attacker's commands Again, not not quite so good. It it depends if Lewis wants to go more on the kill your creatures plan with burn, or try and burn your face off with lava spikes and attackers commands. Because again, all of those slightly weaker if he's trying to go down the route of kill your wild and cattle, kill your curd ape, kill your monstrous swift spear before your death shadow gets online. See, I think if you're Lewis, the cards you're boarding in here are actually the path to exiles. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the the big thing that Lewis that James is playing is this combo and it's the Death Shadows and neither of his Lewis none of Lewis's burn spells actually deal with it that well. So I think the four path but uh, sorry, the three path will be coming in. Um L Molten Rain's just a bit too slow. Mm -hmm. Um Lightning Helix kills the cattle, kills Curd Ape, kills Swift Spear most of the time. But even then it's still not amazing. It's probably not good enough and I just really dislike Searing Blaze in this matchup. Um, it Helix feels better than Lava Spike. Marginally, but at the same time, maybe not. But I don't know. Um, so, oh. from the Suicide Zoo, uh, he's got two Stony Silence, four Leyline of Sanctity, two Nature's Claim, three Pyroclasm, two Dismember, two Duress. Okay, well, four, the, 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 that, that was an easy start. Four Leyline, straight in, two Duress, and... I'm not sure you need that many of the pieces. The Pyroclasms can be good and can also be yeah, really I don't, bad. Yeah, I don't think you need them. Um, because sure, they sometimes will. They'll sometimes get you know one or two creatures, but I think they're just too slow. I think you're you want to stick with your game plan. You just want your ley lines in. You know, probably take out your four, maybe your four thoughtsies. They don't seem amazing. You know, either the four thoughtsies or potentially the four probe. 
something along those lines I think is what he's going to be taking out yeah. but they're shuffling up for game two and Lewis on the play again interesting. hopefully has a slightly less less ha land heavy draw in that time and it felt that maybe if there was a spell in mixed in there somewhere he might have been able to push through enough damage with uh, his creatures and spells that he would have been able to pull the game out but unfortunately a couple of land drops a couple of lands on the bounce they weren't even fetch lands so he can't do a bit of the deck thinning and James was able to take game number one on the back of Team of Battle Rage on Death Shadow. So, players shuffling up for game number two. Lewis on the play, and we shall see how we're going. So, uh, who do you so obviously Fab's played the deck, and he f we've seen there why the matchup can be reasonably good for the Suicide Zoo deck. But do you feel that if Lewis can get a fast enough start, he can just take over the game and and, and just be too quick for the Suicide Zoo deck? Yeah. So. You know, the problem that James is having is that he can get to a point where he just doesn't have... He, he needs to play around too many burn spells, and he's just dead to, you know, any two burn spells. But at the same time, as Lewis does damage to James, he's basically speeding up his own clock. Mm -hmm. He's making these Death Shadows bigger, he's making them impossible to kill, and he's just allowing James to actually just kill him yeah. out of nowhere. So you know, he does have this combo, this Battle Rage Become a Mings combo. Mm -hmm. that's, we're seeing it in stand at the moment. It's incredibly powerful. The fact that you can do upwards of 10 damage, even potentially up to 16 damage out of nowhere is just insane. With a with a dash man in standard exactly. or, or a swift spear in this. So we see James not very happy with his hand. It seemed that he seemed like he had a nice a nice a nice start with Duress and Curd Ape, but he had a couple of become immenses and only one land and the suicide that needs, a bit, more, needs a bit more needs a bit more one of the, but, but he needs a I, bit more pieces. The, yeah. the double become immense is it's not I think he's not a good start. he might actually he might be looking for a decent five with a ley line because yeah. that buys him so much time, yeah. and that's what he look wh well, what he wants. He has a game up, so he's the one that has the ability with the uh, the ley line. So oh, we don't no. see we see a ley line there, but, but no land, no land, and it's no. again double become immense. Yeah, with the risk the following the deck, he has a he has drawn a few of them. Now he's got to decide: does with he the keep scry, the no lander with the scry? No, he's going to mulligan no, it away. No, if there was a one land, I He'd think with a scry you keep. Yeah, and. This is one of the things with Lewis. This is one of the also one of the one of the interesting things. Leyline normally would be incredible against the burn deck. You can't target me with your things. However, Lewis is much more creature heavy. He's got wild macattles. He's got swift spears. He's got uh, goblin guides. He has idol, uh, on. idol on the great rebel. They all have power and toughness. They do. So if, if James Mulligans to a hand where he has leyline and not a lot else, Lewis can just run him out the gym with just creatures and just get him with wild nacals and goblin guides and that's a lot of damage and he yep. does he does also have quite a few number of and we can see the wild nacal already in hand and lewis has a good number of spells that don't target um we see a land in hand so he's going to keep the five there's there doesn't seem to be a ley line in there um so we're going to see <laughs> arid mesa we're probably going to see a wild nacal or we might see a goblin guide one of the, one of the interesting ones as to which you start off with so we see the stomping ground so it's probably going to be a wild nacal to start and even though James would love to have the le the ley line, he has to have a hand that does something as well. Because yeah. if Lewis does start off on a um, on a wild cattle, and we saw from the, ga from the last games, James doesn't ha James does not have many good ways of killing creatures <laughs> outside of his own. So no, he actually doesn't run any removal. <laughs> no, so he's he's just trying to kill him. But we can see the the turn one the turn one two three yeah from the curd ape. So James. Sacrifice his land down to 17. He's going to fetch up probably, I imagine, a stomping ground would be a good place to start. It depends what the rest of his hand is. He could go with a uh, green black land, but he's no, he's going for the stomping ground. So, dueling, dueling old art stomping grounds, which is always nice to see. So, go a little bit there. So, Curd Ape for James 2 2 versus 2 3. So, now we have to see does Lewis have a white land? to get his wild cattle up to a 3-3. Three, three. I don't believe so, does. but he does have an Atarka's command. And which is going to be... Oh, he has... Oh, wow, oh, even better. Is. Searing Blaze. Three damage to your Curd Ape. Three damage to you with Landfall. <laughs> James is giving it a look. So He's going to have a quick read, but yes, you're going to be taking six this turn, James. That's... Uh, five. Five, sorry. It's because there's obviously only but a 2-2 two, two at the moment, but... Ooh, mutagenic. Interesting, but... It's still three points of damage, and now the question but is, does Lewis send I in mean, the... I mean, if he... I think James might be just potentially happy to just 
block it. Mm. Obviously, I... Path to Exile in Lewis's hand as well. But no white mana. Yeah. So, so. <laughs> I think Lewis decided to oh attack. No, I think he. I think he attacks here. Yeah. James on ten. Yeah. This will be interesting. So we can see the nature's claiming house. We see Wild the cattle of his own. So there is a la also a land in there which will allow him to make it a three-three. So we're going to go in for two. So we seem to have nature's claim, team of battle rage, and Wild the cattle. So a hand not necessarily well set up to beat this hand of burn spells from Lewis. But no. Lewis does seem to have kept in the attacker's command and kept in the lava spike. So he might have literally just brought in the Arts. maybe the searing blades and the pass. But we've definitely seen path to exile in hand. And if Lewis can find a so we can see lightning bolt as well in Lewis's hand. So draw for the turn. Do we find it? We find an Eidolon of the Great Revel. Now that's a that's probably what a nature's good draw. For. <laughs> that's a good draw. But that's going to cause a lot of damage to get rid of because it's two points of that plus this fetch land. Yep. And but then he doesn't actually need to kill it this turn. No. Uh, right now, I mean, he can. Kill Lewis it has Lewis time. has enough burn spells in hand that he only needs to get. He's got. He's got. So much burn in hand, so we're going to see Eidolon. Okay, thanks very much. We'll get that into play, but it does two damage. It's going to do two damage to James, and we're going to see the fetch land here down to nine, down to seven. There is, if he draws a land, there's at least nine points of burn still in Lewis's hand, but he does need to find a land. So we see down to nine, so he's going to be going down to seven. This nature's claim, yeah, it looks very good, but it's still painful. Indeed. And Lewis had a quick start. With his, with his spells, and that Searing Blaze was crucial. So, you see a draw. We've got Nature's Claim, we have Team of Battle Rage, and well, I can't see Lewis doing much blocking this. He actually wants his opponent to attack, and we can see Lightning Bolt, Lava Spike, Atarkus Command, and Path to Exile. So, go in for two. I think this is going to go. Yep, no thanks, thanks very much. Yeah, I think this is quite a safe block, uh, quite, quite a safe attack. So, nature's claim? No, maybe, no. I mean, the other option is uh, that James goes for. We see another land in this place. So, a fairly reactive hand at the moment. So, we see the untap. We see uh, monastery. Sw oh, that's an interesting draw. That's a, actually probably one of the better draws. <laughs> We're going upstairs with the lava spike. Take two. Put you down to six. And he could now he could lightning bolt the oh no he's he's going to say go but it, James is down to six at the moment which is not a lot of life no and Lewis is still at thirteen so we're going to see Nature's claim down to four so not necessarily ah oh, okay he did remember the trigger yes. he, he does need to remember the trigger which is important he also gains four life yep. which is also really important with yep. the team of battle rage still in hand, he ha and the only card left in James's hand is team of battle rage, and there is enough points of damage in in play. Yeah, make this do. Yeah, so he's going to go to three, and Lewis is just going to say, lightning well, bolt thanks very much. Here's my lightning bolt. You know, you go <laughs> right on to game number three. That's one of the powerful things about the Nardburn deck is and lightning bolt, as we said earlier <laughs> at the deck tech. Lightning bolt, powerful, powerful, very, very powerful card, card. and it's the instant speed, one mana. Thanks very much. On to game number three. So. Back to the sideboard, we still see the Molten Reigns in the sideboard. We see some number of Atarkas Command. A Boris Charm has also gone into the sideboard. Atarkas Command is also back into the sideboard as well. So he did take out some of the spells that don't target. So we've got to imagine he brought the Blazes in. And we've got to imagine he brought the Paths in. Because there seems to be multiple Boris Charms in back in his sideboard. Multiple Atarkas Commands. I think he might have actually drawn his only Atarkas Command left in his deck. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, he James is now going to be on the play. <laughs> yes. And, and this is something that he probably wants... It gives him a little bit of extra time. And... One of the things also with James being on the play is his one drops are generally bigger than Lewis's, especially if he starts on a um, Curd Ape. Just as it's a 2-3 on turn one. Yep. In comparison, say, a 2-2 two -two or a 2-2 two -two or a 1-2 for Lewis. So the start he's probably looking for is turn one Curd Ape because it allows him to put up a blocker early on. The question is, has Lewis brought in any copies of Destructive Revelry? Has he hedged against the risk of Leyline of Sanctity? And, and that's going to be the very interesting thing. He hasn't seen it yet. He hasn't. And he doesn't know... We, he, Lewis might not know exactly how the Suicide Zoo deck mulligans. Uh, so obviously we'll, we'll have to see how this one goes. So well, players are one all, shuffling up for game number three. Two Zoo decks, slightly 
more colours in one. Different. Slightly different, but they're both trying to do the same thing. Yeah. Is just get you dead and get you dead as quick as possible. One does it with a Death Shadow, one does it with Monstrous Fist Spear, Goblin Guide, and the Wild and the Cattle. So, quick present shuffle up of each other's decks. Go from there. So, I think Lewis will be happy with how that game went. He drew enough spells, didn't draw any lands, but still managed to get there. So, a complete flip side of it. No lands compared to all the lands in game number one. So, players allow out their seven. And let's see what they have to work with. Three, four, five, six, seven. So, because he become immense, Swift Spear, land, Swift Spear, Leyline, Taxi and Probe, and become immense. And I think we might see this one as a reasonably quick keep for Lewis. Oh, sorry, for James. The ley line and a land also helping, and, and Lewis having a look at his hand. If there's plenty of burn in there, he might be less interested. But there is a path to exile. There's a lot of burn in that hand. So, but it's only one land. Lewis is going to send it back on the draw. He has a few more looks with this, and the scry seems to have made such a big difference to these matches. Actually, going, I can aggressively mulligan so much more than I used to as well. So, Lewis will have a quick shuffle up see what his six looks like. So. Oh. So, it's what so the sideboard options are very interesting for both decks. James kept a one-lander. With a leyline. With a leyline. And double swift. And a double swift. Wow. That's, that's close. That's... But he has he has the becoming mess as well. So Lewis, we we'll see that he's got. He does have the goblin guide, which could be really good. I mean, this is. He's going to scry one. He's going to so the low line, but <laughs> Lewis is now going to feel. That's actually interesting because now Lewis has even more information for his scry. Yeah. Now I'm not sure when the ley line is actually meant to come into play. No. Because it doesn't. It's not meant to come into play until after. Until the game has started, which yep. means that everyone's resolved their mulligans. Yep. And. Scrying is part of resolving the mulligan, I believe. So I don't think he was meant to actually play that ley line then. But bit of free information for Lewis. Bit of free information, but we you can know see what? a handful of burn spells. Yeah. But a lot of those burn spells can be directed in other directions, and he does. Unfortunately, the double Boris charm could be interesting, but game, giving indestructible to your goblin guide or double strike to the goblin guide is still a good use of your mana. So we see him for one with the swift spear. Yep. James down to seventeen. Interesting so. that James didn't elect to cast the. We see a oh, very interesting draw. Swift Spear for Lewis. And we might see him start off with his own Swift Spear. So we see down to 17, 17, 17 as well. Piece. Swift Spear of his own. Or are we uh, going for the Goblin Guide? No, nope, going for the Goblin Guide. So I think James. See here Death is, Shadow revealed. I think James here is electing to go Swift. Play a second Swift Spear. Probe you, hit you for four, put you to 13 on turn two. Mm -hmm. Which. Obviously, if Lewis can draw a land. If Lewis can draw a land, his hand is pretty well set up Same for a Swift Spear draw. Yeah. So we, but of course, now James needs to try and hit a land. So he's going to go down to thirteen. But he's putting Lewis at thirteen, mm. and James is happy being at thirteen. Because okay. thirteen is quite close to making a big, ha big yeah. death shadow, or a reasonable size death shadow. <laughs> you know. And become immense in hand could end the game very quickly. Exactly. Even though James is only on one land, it unfortunately it doesn't does have to become immense, but. It, he can draw into that. Yeah, and also, you know, become events really technically only really costs like one, one green. One green, yeah. <laughs> Let, let's be real here. So we see the probe, he'll delve. trigger and draw a card. We see another ley line. <laughs> Probably not what he wanted to draw, no. but. Th that's the problem of running many copies of ley line, is that yep. sometimes you draw multiple copies of ley line and don't do anything with you it. You don't need multiple copies, unfortunately. So one does the job. It'd be interesting to see if he decides. You know, he is going to go in for four. Lewis down to. The Lewis go, yep, no worries, can't do anything about that. Take four. And pass the turn now. Can Lewis draw a land? If it's land here, be really good. No, it's a searing blaze, which isn't a terrible card either. But we're going to see probably swift spear and probably attack. Put it because at the moment Lewis is winning the race, even though Death Shadow could cause could put some dents in that. Although if James doesn't draw a land, a lightning bolt does deal with the Death Shadow. It does if he is at a high enough life total. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing about Boris Chum as well, interesting in this scenario, he can't four him, but he can give his guys a double strike. He can. And at times that could be four damage. Yeah. <laughs> With this board, that is four damage. We fact. see become immense. So we know that Lewis James is not drawing a land, so that Death Shadow is going to be a 3-3. Three, three. And if he if Lewis draws a land and can searing blaze, then my goodness, that could be quite a blowout. Uh no, because it's a it's a six six with three damage marked on it. They happen at the same time. 
Oh. Oh. Okay, maybe <laughs> and, not then. And, and at which point, I'm pretty sure game state is checked. But, and let, Let's be honest. Lewis right now is lining up this light. Oh, no, but he's not going to cast the Death Shadow, which is interesting indeed. We see Path to Exile. Whoa. Good draw from Lewis. Might allow him to get out from underneath this so, Death Shadow. I think he's just going to bolt one of these Swiss Spears. Mm -hmm. Pack for four. Put James to six. Say, come on, James, what have you got? Is but, it he does, but he does need to do with his creatures because there is a become immense in James's hand and that can do quite a bit of damage. Yep. I mean, the other option is Lewis, Lewis could leave behind one of the Swiss Spears and start use it as a blocker. We see Mishra's Bauble. And it's not a land. It's not a land. And he's going to struggle to cast this team up, this become immense without things. But he gets to attack for two. Play the Death Shadow, which is going to be big. It gets pathed, but it might to find the green mana. And that could... It won't be lethal quite yet, but it's very close to being lethal. Uh, it won't find him green mana because he does not, not run play a any basics. He has zero... zero oh, wow. Basics. So it is straight upside swords. It has no downside. Remove your guy. It's, it's, he runs four... Five lands that he can fetch: Blood Crypt, Stomping Ground, Overgrown Tomb, Godless Shrine, and Temple Garden. Wow! So Zero no basics. Wow! No basics. This path to exile is going to be incredible. It is. Oh wow! So in for in for two with the Swiss Spear. Lewis down to nine. He's going to untap. He's going to think right. Hopefully this path to exile. Can I draw a land? Land here would be so important. I don't think he drew. Boris Jam. But we see path to exile being lined up straight away. Path to your guy. Thanks very much. Get him out of here. Yep. Trigger my Swiss Spear. Put you down to two. What can you do, James, with the top of your deck? And unfortunately, I don't think it's much. Well, I mean, depending on what's in Lewis' hand, there is a play where he goes, I'd just attack you with my Swiss Spear, but he's going to take four. He's going to trigger. Trigger. Don't. Let's see if he reveals. So, he reveals a nature's claim. Not a land again. And right now, James really struggling to cast his spells because he can't find that second land. And Lewis. Well, he's com that Leyline of Sanctity has done nothing. Nothing, <laughs> unfortunately, because no. all that Lewis has done is just go point burn spell at your guy, point removal spell at your guy, yep. get rid of your guy, remove your guy. I keep attacking because this is one of the powerful things saying about the Nia Burn deck. It runs enough creatures more than the Burn deck because it has four Wild Nacatals that yep. it can just beat you down with creatures. I mean, look, you look at the you look at Lewis's um, uh, removals, uh, his creatures, four Goblin there guys. We go, there we go, land, land searing blaze. Game over. Can it target? Can it target though? Oh no, it can't. Sorry. But he's going to attack in anyway. He's going to block. He's going to yeah, see a uh, see the double strike mode, and there is game to Lewis. And unfortunately, he's going to show his hand of triple become immense. Wow. And wow, that was after the start that James had. That did not look like that was going to end that way. But no. Turns out when you don't draw a second land, even with Goblin Guard triggers, it can all end. And, and as we see from Lewis's deck, four Goblin Guide, four Martial Swiss Sphere, four Wild in the Cattle, four Idol on the Great Revel, two Grim Lava Mancer. A lot of removal spells there. So, so in terms of the Path to Exile, there's no basics in the Suicide Zoo deck. So, yeah. Lewis picks up the W for round number three of the modern regional Pro Tour qualifier here. From Dark Sphere. We're going to. Um, yes, uh, every single one of his goblin, goblin Guide triggers did not reveal a land. Yeah. And he did remember it every time, unfortunately, just not James's day today. Suicide is a very interesting deck. Uh, yeah. really, we saw really from game one just out of nowhere. Thanks very yeah. much. Um, here's some Death Shadows, and, and, and Lewis is, is now gone. But we're going to bring it back to the studio booth. John Patrick Shea Holland. That was round number three of coverage here from the Regional Proto Qualifier. Modern format, as you can see. The only one of the. Uh, and then we go back to standard now, then sealed standard, and then modern again. And congratulations to Lewis. That was a hard-fought one. H had a benefit in game three that James just couldn't draw a second land, even with Goblin Guides, and that is horrible. And because he was on red, he was on black red land rather than green red. He wasn't yep. able to play it. And if he would have been able to play the Become Immense, it might have actually helped him a little bit. But Almost he's got to try and play yeah. the Death Shadow, which is a red black land to get the Swiss Spears into play as well. And that. For that few matches, all she wrote. We're going to have a quick break because yep. I think it's about time we went and got lunch. We haven't stopped. All of our rounds have not finished early enough for us to stop because everyone was like, "Oh no, guys, stay there. We've got another feature match ready for you." So we're going to go have some lunch. We're yep. not going to. We're not even going to give them a chance to do that. It's been a fantastic day so far. I'm really looking forward to four, five, six, and seven, and then of course, with the regional Pro Tour qualifier being as it is, it's yes. not a top eight. Well, there it's is a top eight. It's, we're it's 104 a... players. Yep. Which so we're not at the 128 barrier. So there's no. only. How many people qualify? Four. 
four out of the top eight will qualify. So, so they basically play their quarter finals, winners. which is essentially <laughs> four, four finals. finals. <laughs> so it's going to be quite the thing. And hopefully by the time we get down the stretch to there, we'll be able to get one feature match. And then hopefully, if there's another one, we'll get another one on yep. camera as well. But we still have rounds four, five, six, and seven to bring you. And of course, the standard PPTQ tomorrow, which should hopefully be quite big with the amount of people down here today. But yes. we're going to take a quick break, go get some lunch, and we hopefully you will join us back for around number four of coverage here from Dashra in London for the UK's regional Pro Tour qualifier. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you again soon.